Well, guys, it's me, Alex. How are you doing? And we're going to be streaming today on three different platforms. Hopefully, you can see me on Facebook. I see that I will be having my TikTokers right here. I wish I can combine all of them. I'm looking into this and also my YouTube channel. Hopefully, I will be answering some questions. And what are we going to be talking about today? Well, everyday routine for dispatcher. It have been a hectic few days because I have a lot of new dispatchers who start dispatching. I have new dispatch services who are actually onboarding new carriers. I have people who open trucking companies and they really uh, don't know how to deal with the hiring of the drivers, what to do. So let's answer a few things which are going on today. Well, I just finished um, actually apologizing for one of the brokers. So let's talk about this. And I don't know if probably for YouTube, it's going to, I mean, for TikTok, it's going to be kind of awkward because I need to make sure that I do see my um, two screens right here. And for TikTok, I'm not going to be able to share the screen. For my YouTubers and Facebook, you will be able to see my screen. We're going to go to load board. We're going to do a few things. And we're just going to manage problems which come to us as a dispatchers every day. I see that Penny is watching. Hi, Penny. How are you? One of my uh, followers. Uh, glad to see you. And I know it was not scheduled. It's something that I decided to do before I go to post office. As a reminder, everybody remembers that we are sending 10,000 toy trucks to DC. So after this live, I will be on my way to post office to send. And uh, between me and my daughter, we bought uh, 22 trucks. So cute toy trucks. Uh, I am very proud of her. She when and she also posted a little TikTok video yesterday about her mission. And she is very, very supportive for women in trucking industry. Well, let's go back to routine. I see Zorana's watching. Hi, Zorana. So new dispatchers. A lot of times new dispatchers are afraid to deal with the problems, right? So here's example today. I have a... I have a new dispatcher who've been dispatching for a few weeks, prior driver, but, um, you know, doesn't really have experience that uh, much with cancellation when, when he has experience as a driver when the problems come with a truck, but I guess he does not really know how to deal with it, right? So we had a load picking up from Oregon going to York, PA. It has to pick up in a few hours. Remember, this is a difference. Um, this is a difference um, in time. We are in Chicago, so I'm on Midwest Central time. We are two hours behind in Oregon. Well, the truck driver had engine check. So broker called to verify if he's on schedule. He was still unloading, which is um, normal, but... The driver did not mention that, well, first, before I'm going to go get loaded, I need to stop at the dealer. And people who know what's going on nowadays, when you have a problem special being on the West Coast, you know it's not going to be a one, two, three, one, two, three fix, right? So uh, dispatcher, instead of being honest and calling the broker and telling them, listen, guys, unfortunately, this is trucking, right? Things happen in the trucking and trucks do get breakdown and we cannot, we cannot put your commodity on the truck if we have engine check. So he thought that it's going to be a fast fix and it's not. First, they actually did the diagnostics and we have to be stuck in Oregon till Monday because they need some part and it's not going to be delivered there till Monday. So instead of being honest from the beginning to the Fitzmark Logistics, well, he was holding off for a few hours because he was thinking that it can be fixed. Then he finally emailed the broker, said, guys, unfortunately, we do need to, we do need to cancel this load, right? 
we need to make sure that you understand that we do have breakdown. And the problem is that it was already chain. He should have talked about it honestly. And the hardest part is that we had the same problem. Remember, I went live uh, on Thanksgiving Friday when I was talking about Circle Logistics, right? That we were delivering to South Dakota and we were supposed to get them loaded. And we had pick up from the same actually brokerage, Fitmark, with picking up from uh, South Dakota and delivering next day to lacrosse. And unfortunately, we did not get unloaded because Circle Logistics lied to us. So at that point, well, I told Mike right away, Mike, I don't think we're going to be, he gave me a few hours and we did settle that. I mean, nothing I can do. Actually, today I forward them rate right confirmation with layover and everything else. So that was okay. He's like, okay, I understand it's trucking. But today this is the same broker. But unfortunately, I was not the dispatcher because you guys understand that we have dispatch services. So I wish I could dispatch every truck in our dispatch service, but sometimes I cannot. So when I figure out that this happened and I saw the message from, look at this, they were so cute. Actually, I'm going to share the screen, right? So they sent, they sent the email with this clown, right? Like, okay, here you go. Well, I can understand them. They got upset. What can you do as a manager of dispatch service? What can you do as an owner of the company? Well, you need to make sure you call, you apologize. And probably they're not going to remove now this carrier from uh, their blacklist. But at least have a decency, explain, and take responsibility for actions of your employees and your dispatch service. And that's what I did. I actually apologized. I forwarded them previous um, revised rate confirmation from Circle Logistics and chain of the emails. I did send them information about the order which is going to be placed a dealer in Oregon. So hopefully, guys understand that sometimes in trucking things happen, but I still sincerely apologize for my dispatcher being afraid to tell honestly, guys, first we need to fix this. Because let's say we went to get loaded first. He was only three miles away. So yeah, engine check. You can still go get loaded. You all the way in Washington. Load has to deliver to Pennsylvania by Tuesday. We don't have much time. And now you got loaded. You go to the dealer and you cannot keep delivering this load. So what was the best decision here? Pretend? Don't understand that this doesn't make sense? I mean, what do you do? So here is a dispatcher without experience, driver who is hoping because he wants to move, he doesn't even want to lose a day, actually telling dispatcher, oh, it's okay, it's probably just engine check, I'll go after I get loaded. And there is you who is overseeing all this, have some experience. So guys, please understand, you do not want to put the cargo on your truck if you have problem with your tractor or trailer. It's going to cost you way more money because you are sitting with a cargo. Secondary now, it's going to be late fee. And I don't think that broker is going to be happy to find out that you actually went with an uh, engine check, got loaded, and now you have to sit there till Monday. So let's say if we would get loaded, you sit there till Monday. Now is that load going to be in Pennsylvania on Tuesday? Well, unless what? Unless you are... Strong solo Sergey, right? Who flies? Remember that memes? Everybody has those memes. So no, it's gonna be impossible. So this is what we were dealing with today, right? So being honest, if you did something wrong, apologize. We do have people on other side, brokers who will understand. 
but honesty is the key. And here probably people are going to say, well, Alex, uh, sometimes, sometimes things happen and we as a dispatchers, we're afraid to tell them because they're going to cancel the load. Again, you need to see that what's going on, right? Are you picking up today? Are you not picking up? What is the transit? Is that something which can be fixed or it's not going to be fixed, right? So this was what we were dealing with today, okay? Uh, then I had a phone call from one of my previous students who opened, and he never took the dispatch classes. He only took safety class. Um, he only took safety class from me, and he actually went. He followed all the steps, and he learned a lot in safety. He opened his MC. He went and he bought two trucks, which is a power only. He did reach out to my service and ask if we could dispatch uh, his new trucks. And guys, you know, I don't deal with power only. I do not deal with box trucks or sprinters. I mean, so much you can do, right? As Again, I wish I could dispatch all the trucks in USA, but uh, no, I don't have capacity for that. Human capacity, uh, my personal <laughs> capacity to oversee everything. But um, he called me today. He interviewed a few dispatch services. And I believe that yesterday was the first day when they went on the road. So the guy is very lucky. He's like, oh, my God, finally, I found the drivers. Took me two months to find the drivers. They flew in. We all ready to go. Problems, of course, started with, like, connecting ELDs, which is manageable. They spent another day. So now, now, well, Power only, right? First, if you don't have Amazon approved, this is kind of nonsense, right? But still, they're trying to find the loads, right? Well, here's mistake number one. When you hire dispatch service, dispatch service has their routine. They have their contracts, dispatch agreements. They assign dispatcher. I don't care what they do, but you still have to remember, it is your company. So it is your representation. And you need to make sure you monitor how dispatch service handles your business. So the first mistake was done with uh, emails. Well, you don't want dispatch service to use their emails to set up you with the brokers. And why is that? And we discuss this in my classes all the time. Well, first, any dispatcher, any dispatch service is working on behalf of the carrier. So if I'm working on behalf of your company, when I do set up your company, I should use your email, your phone number, all the information. And yes, where is the dispatchers? It should be actually email made exactly for dispatch, sir, uh, dispatcher, which you can give access to dispatch service. Why dispatch services uh, like to use their own? Well, I can tell you this because I don't want you to monitor how conversations go, how many times they do cancel, how many times they have something like this happen 10 minutes ago when the dispatcher did not do their duties, when dispatcher uh, did not understand how important it is not to be on a blacklist. So if you do not have access to those conversations, you hope that they do a good job, but Actually, a lot of things goes wrong, especially when you start it. This is the mistake number one. Secondary, well, you have your drivers. You are the owner of the company. They are your company drivers. They are not owner operators. Dispatchers, this dispatch service is asking drivers every time. Are you going to take this load or you're not going to take this? Are you okay with this load or you're not okay with this load? Who are we working for? Well, we're not as secretaries. If your dispatch service cannot understand that this is their job to connect to A, to B, to C, to D, and making sure that this is connected, what are you paying for? What are you paying for? For them to be a secretary? Oh, this is a load posted. That's how much. They, do you want to take it? Well, really? What are you going to do with me tomorrow? Don't ask my driver. Don't even ask me. Because if I hired you as a dispatch service, that's what I am paying you for, right? 
secondary and other mistakes. And in this, in this uh, case, um, they are outside of the country. I do believe they are in Poland. So connection actually not that good. So can you picture they are calling the brokers with their half broken connection? Well, doesn't sound good. Secondary, well, they are trying, and I understand it's power only, but they are trying to take loads that don't even go right now with your insurance coverage, right? For example, if you have a power only and you want to tow some um, RV or you want to tow some tractor or something, well, you're not a car hauler. You still need to have a different coverage. Well, if you're a truck driver, only have power uh, only, and he has no securement like chains, tarps, all the stuff. How can you offer this guy flatbed load? How is he going to go? What is he going to secure that load? Do you really think sitting there somewhere in Poland, in Moldova, in Uzbekistan, in Colombia, that it's like uh, drive two miles and get chains, got the tarps, and do you really think that's that easy when you guys call and say, oh, I got power only load. It's no loads. Here you go. He needs 10 chains. He needs this, this, and this. Come on, guys. I understand that you working outside of the USA, but basic knowledge is a key. This is already nonsense. Well, mistake number three. And believe me, guys, it's been already just only two days. And I do have permission to share this information from my previous student. And I'm very thankful that he's okay with me sharing his experiences because a lot of people who come to this industry without knowledge, they will face the same problem. So thank you so much for letting me share this as, um, as a teaching, teaching experience, right? Well, one load was delivered. So they got loadout trailer they can use for three days going from Virginia. They deliver in Connecticut. They have two more days, but they are submitting load to RTS. And of course, they do have RTS because he's my previous student. He knows that I am agent to RTS, although he did not contact me, but it's okay. I'll forgive him. He did contact RTS directly and it's okay. As long as he has a good factor, I do not mind. But here's the thing. This load is not approved. Why it's not approved? Well, it's not approved because it has no rating. The broker has none rated. So this load has to be built directly. And whose fault is this? Is this driver's fault? Is this him as a new owner of the trucking company? Or this is a dispatcher who simply missed the step, the basic step of what? of checking on checking the rating right and that's what we do so if uh, for people who are on facebook and youtube you can see my screen right right so this is a rts so we go here and we check we check the rating and it doesn't matter which factor do you have i have carriers who have loss i have carriers who have otr factor i have factor who have uh, i mean uh, carriers who have rivera financial you as a dispatcher have to go and check. Today, actually, I was surprised because uh, Transfic, uh, Transfic used to Transfic, uh, Transfix, they used to have a good rating, right? Look at this. So if you see now they are D. If you were checking their rating 30 days ago, it was still C. So what does it prove to you guys? Well, it proves you that you have to check the rating of the broker every time. I don't care if it's a TQL. I don't care if it's Coyote. I don't care if it's a GB Hunt because things can go up and down for big brokerages. And look at this. The rating is D. So let's go one more time. What does it mean the ratings on RTS, for example? Well, A is excellent. B is above average. You can still you can still uh, take the load. C is average. D below average. Average payments received after net thirty to forty five. Do not book the load, right? And and that's what happened. And that they have they are not good. They are not bad, but they do not have established 
credit rating, right? So they need minimum of three paid invoices with RTS to be approved as a broker. So in this case, this dispatcher who is managing this new carrier, she failed on the simple step. And here's my question. If this would be my dispatch service, would I still charge a fee for this load? Well, no. Honestly, you cannot charge because now you put, first of all, you put a new carrier in danger that he might not get paid. Now he needs to try to get quick pay at least, and he's going to pay higher uh, interest, right, for the quick pay. So he's the percentage. I mean percentage, not interest. Sorry, guys. Secondary, that means that you don't know the basics on how to dispatch. So if that would be my situation, I would have the phone call right away with the owner of this dispatch service, and I would discuss all of this, right? Secondary, I would make sure that I monitor every conversation. Okay, so look at this. Problem with not approved broker. Problem with not understanding liability and uh, insurance coverage, right? Number two, what is the number three? Well, making sure that you do not ask your driver, are you taking, are you not taking? So that means that you need to have a plan A, B, C, and D, right? Otherwise, why, why do they need you as a dispatcher, okay? What else is happening? Well, let's see. What else they were asking me today? Well, they were asking me today, well, should I go and buy a, dr a drive-in? Should I go and start looking for the reefer? Should I start going and wait for Amazon? What should I do? And here's the thing, guys. Doesn't matter what you decide to do from this point. You need to know the steps. And steps are in dispatch and in starting the business are the same. Drivers, dispatchers, owner of the company have to understand the liability. Secondary, you need to understand as a new trucking company, you only working with 30% of the brokers. So building relationship understanding what you're promising and what you can deliver is a must. Oh, another mistake. They found load with 250 miles deadhead. And load was going uh, from East Coast, Virginia to Illinois. And again, the same conversation. Is this a good load? Do you want to take it? You want me to deadhead 250 miles on East Coast? Then I have to drive to Illinois another 900 miles because it's a Southern Illinois with a pay of $2,200. Seriously? I mean, I would be embarrassed to ask if I would be a dispatcher because this is nonsense. First, we do not dead had that much. Secondary, I went and I posted, I posted the truck. And yes, there is an option with loadout trailer. You can take it to a trailer for three, seven days. So yesterday trailers, here's my question. And I hope I could get an answer maybe. Well, they negotiated that they will take that loadout trailer for three days. So they're not getting paid for the trailer. So they took the load from Virginia going to connect to 2000. Yeah, it's not bad, 370, 370 per mile. But there was an option probably to take this trailer for seven days. So if you're already not getting paid for moving this trailer back and forth, why don't you negotiate for seven days? Why don't you give the trailer for loadout for seven days for your care so you don't have to go through nightmares, right? Um, then they had the same problem and I was hearing the conversation. Oh, unfortunately we tried to book your load, but your insurance did not answer fast enough with a certificate holder because, you know, when you get set up, you need to make sure that uh, you are, uh, put the broker as a certificate holder. So my question was, well, hello, who is your, uh, producer? Well, your producer is progressive. I'm insurance agent as well. Well, if your agent has online presence, they will already give you 
online uh, login so you guys can request certificates. But if you're an insurance agent, not a producer, I'm talking about, for example, me, if my agency does not have that online presence, well, guys, Progressive does. So as the owner of the company, you go, you register, you register, somebody's calling me, you register, um, you guys register on Progressive, your account, because you have your policy, and there you go. You give access to your dispatcher or your dispatch service, and how long is it going to take? Well, it's going to take you 30 seconds. So are you going to lose the load in the future because you cannot get certificate holder? Well, certificate holder going to be two minutes the most if you are slow typer like me, right? Because I don't type fast. But still, you can copy and paste from the request from the broker. You can log in, click on certificate make sure to put the information that broker needed make sure you include email which they want you to send certificate it has to come from progressive uh, website you cannot uh, send it to you and then resend it right so if this dispatch service have been doing this for so many years and they have so many customers here's my question well, this is not your first customer you need to have certificate holder. This is not your first customer who has power only. So are you really pretending that you guys know how to dispatch or are you just trying to be a secretary somewhere sitting in Poland, somewhere sitting in uh, Uzbekistan and all other countries, India, Pakistan? Because if you really have been dispatching and you guys have an office, and you oversee in 10, 15 carriers, this is something that has to be decided before the first day. For example, my one of my students is uh, asking me to dispatch her husband. And I was uh, hesitated because her, her husband has a lot of restrictions. Oh, I don't want to take load heavier than 20,000. I don't want to go there. I don't want to. But I still told her I'm going to give her a chance. And today we're going to have that meeting, Zoom meeting with her, her husband, and the my dispatcher who will be representing them, right? And that's what we're going to discuss. Well, first, all the paperwork we already have seen. We're going to discuss how we're going to manage all this and how the certificates, can they get it? Is their agent going to get it? Do they have a presence? But again, they have progressive. So I need to make sure they, if they don't have account yet, they're going to create account. We need to have login. Well, she sent me all the information already. Login for her uh, uh, factory, and I believe she's using OTR. Uh, she sent uh, she sent her uh, load board login. She sent her email that we have access. She sent her ELD login. So that's what you need before you start. So why do I still need to talk to her? Well, because we need to be on the same page. So we're going to talk about possibilities and what we can do, what we can do to improve their dispatch. I think my phone is not charging. Uh, allow. So, and hopefully, hopefully this relationship is going to work. But um, going back to dispatch services, guys, you do need to do, you need to do your homework. Because we don't really need uh, people just calling a million times. If I am the owner of the trucking company who wants to go and concentrate on growth, who uh, wants who wants to go and maybe look for other trucks, who has other things going on because trucking is not uh, main uh, revenue, well, that's why they're hiring safety service that's why they hire in dispatch service so they just want to oversee but it seems like they want driver owner to make all these decisions they want them to figure out how to get certificate holder they want to do the well then it's not a service this is a joke right i mean but again we have a lot of dispatch services who do not understand what is their responsibility right Going back one more time, because I am getting tired of that question. Alex, I really want to sign up for your class. But I have been reading in Facebook groups. I've been watching everybody on TikTok. 
and everybody's saying that dispatchers are il doing illegal actions. One more time, guys, as a dispatcher, what are your duties? What are your responsibilities? Let's go back first. You are service. You're working on behalf of your carrier, representing him only for few, um, few different uh, routes. Right. First, you are posting their equipment, so you need to know their equipment. You need to know their driver. You are helping them with processing paperwork. So on their behalf. You are doing setups for this carrier with the brokers, right? Initial setups, maybe uh, changing something in setups, right? So paperwork, broker, uh, carrier agreements, right? Easy, easy. Can you do it just by yourself? Oh, I'm a Alex, I'm dispatcher. I want to get set up with TQL and then I'm going to dispatch everybody. No, because for getting set up with any broker, you have to be a carrier. You have to be approved carrier. You have to be a carrier with satisfactory rating. You need to make sure that you have at least 1 million liability coverage. You need to make sure you have at least 100,000 cargo. And this is just the basic. If we're going to go to reefer, you need to have a reefer breakdown. If you're working with a power only, you need to add a trailer inter-exchange. If you're working with a car haulers, your liability goes up. If you're hazmat, it goes to 5 million. So different coverages. But you as a dispatcher, you are representing carrier and you are organizing their movements from A to B, but not freight movements. You are looking for the loads for the carriers. So you post the truck. So you post the truck today in Vienna, Virginia. You have power only. So you know the type. You put where you want to go. Let's say you want to stay on East Coast. So Z0, Z1, Z2, maybe even Z3. As a dispatcher, you need to know the zones, you need to know the regions, you need to know the states. So you posted your equipment. Let's say TQL calls you. Well, I see you have posted truck. Power only. Is it still available? Or you call them? Yes. You are dispatcher. Are you going to tell them, well, this is my truck, Alex, dispatch service. Can we negotiate? Yeah, you're going to negotiate, but it's going to go to home, to the carrier. So they will ask carriers MC. They will my ask carriers DOT. They will verify the name of the carrier. They will verify the address. And then you guys are going to be discussing details. When you discuss details and you agree to the load, is TQL is going to pay you directly from freight movement from Vienna, Virginia to Effingham, Illinois, let's say $2,200? No. They are going to pay to carrier. Let's say in this case, Elnur Transportation. So they pay to this carrier, right? Well, in this case, is this illegal action? Well, not. You only representative carrier. You did not go. You did not negotiate that load. You did not go to shipper in Vienna. You not know the receiver in Illinois. You're not getting compensated. So who is paying you as a dispatcher? Well, carrier pays you, right? Elnor Transportation is going to be paying me Alex, best dispatch service, percentage, whatever we agreed on, right? 3%, 4%, 5%, 8%, whatever we agree on after the Lord's going to get delivered. So this is not illegal action. But if you as a dispatcher misrepresenting this information and you are posting everywhere, me, Alex Dispatch Services, we are the best because we have dedicated lanes. We have direct uh, shippers. We have direct customers. Well, now you're acting as a broker. So as a dispatcher, can you represent yourself as such? No way. Because to do that, you need to have MC for brokerage, you need to go apply and get also your surety bond 
you need to have BOC3 filing done. So do we see where the problem comes? So dear students, future students, if you do want to become a dispatcher, this is not illegal action. You just need to understand what you're going to be doing, who is going to be compensating you, and how you're going to run your business. Okay? So that's about it. And for most of you, you usually start as a dispatcher. You learn on mistakes and you move on and you become a broker because you learn the shippers, receivers, you have carriers who you're working with, so you have capacity. So if you are that person who can go and sell, if you're that person who can run the business, why not? Go ahead. And now, best the Alex dispatch service becomes Alex brokerage, right? Because now I have brokerage. Here's the thing. Don't put the eggs in one basket. So make sure you have two different companies because if you want to open trucking company, dispatch service, brokerage under the same name, under the same umbrella, first, it's not smart. Secondary, nobody's going to trust you because they will be afraid of double brokering. And going back to double brokering, well, it's very easy to scam people in this industry. Let's say you open trucking company, you have only two trucks, but you start going to Amazon and you book in those loads, right, guys? Come on. How many of you uh, do that? You got a good score. Let's say you have five trucks. Now, you booking instead of five loads a day, well, you are booking 10, 15 loads. And I am still amazed why Amazon does not kick those carriers out. And I know why, because they need they're afraid to be moved. So they cannot afford not to move. They're afraid they need to make their billions and trillions of dollars. So they just close in their eyes. They know that this carrier only has five trucks. So now these guys keep this MC and they book in all these loads on Amazon or even from other brokers on this MC because it has a good rating. It has a good, it has a good uh, safety score. And then they resell. So they go and they open brokerage. They go and buy a surety bond and they post the trucks. I mean, the loads of what they, they just booked on Amazon. They just booked from TQL, somebody else. They make a fake rate confirmation. I mean, not fake because you will check. Yeah, they have a brokerage, but the load does not come from them. So this is double brokering, right? So look how many issues we have in trucking, right? Well, issues um, come and go. No, not really. I think the scammers get better and better and better, right? Well, let's see if you guys have any questions because in another 10, 15 minutes, I do need to go and send those trucks to Washington, D.C. And one more time, guys, we'll be going to Washington, D.C. next week. It's my first time. I'm uh, very excited to see the city, very excited to meet with my previous students and just uh, do some other business meetings. So this would be some traveling time for me. But let's see. Uh, we have our member. And remember, guys, you can be a member on our YouTube channel. And if you've been watching us on Monday, we were giving the free classes, right? So our previous students uh, received three free classes. And of course, our YouTube members got free classes as well. And membership is only $3.99. And all that goes back to community, right? We also had students who will be offering free classes as a giving back, right? So on Christmas... And Christmas, you guys are going to see another giveaway. And we always do them on the big holidays. And uh, we want to spread the good news that trucking can be changed if we get united. But my personal belief, trucking can get changed with education. Basic education for how to run the business, how to build successful dispatch service, how to start trucking company how to do safety and compliance. I do believe that lack of education is, uh, is a huge, huge problem in trucking. So let's see. 
I see uh, I used to live in Washington DC. Ryan, how are you? I always recognize you by dog. Are you actually on the route or you back to dispatch and make sure you write down to me. This is one of my previous students and he has a really great personality. We have people from Ukraine. Hi, Vitaly. So what is a TikTok? So I also have TikTok. That is a commercial vehicle under 10K. Needs an ELD? No, you do not need an ELD. You also do not need a drug and alcohol uh, program because your drivers are not CDL drivers. What else? Alex, I miss you. Thomas Goodwin, well, I miss you as well. I am dispatcher from Nairobi. Okay, so that's good. How's it going? Hopefully you do a good job, right? Uh, guys, ask me questions and I can answer. What are you struggling with today, right? Uh, so let's see. Seems like our fuel went down a little bit, so that's a good news. So let's let's double check. Let's double check. Yeah. What are we paying nowadays? So let's see. Let's put Chicago, Illinois. Let's go, let's say, to Miami, Florida. And I will share the screen. Where is my um share the screen? So let's see the prices. Let's see. Uh, what are we paying in Illinois? Well, uh 430. Well, 430 it's an RTS pricing, it's better, it's better than 530 and 6. Let's go to let's go to Indiana for 30. Okay, so you get 99 cents discount if you use uh, RTS fuel. Guys, remember if you do need a factoring, if you need if you need uh, fuel discounts, reach out to me directly. And most of you guys know my uh, email. You guys know how to reach me, right? And uh, here is my uh, phone, 224-630-200. Please text me first because I'm busy. Let's go see how much we're getting paid in Georgia. 419. Wow, even better. What is our Florida? 419. So South is going uh, doing better. Let's go to Texas. How much are we paying in taxes for fuel today? Oh, Texas, USA. Let's put... Let's put uh, Let's see here. Well, let's let's go all the way to Laredo, uh, Laredo, Texas. Okay, let's see the prices. Okay, did it close down? Okay, truck fuel. Why it doesn't show? Okay, wow, look at this. So somewhere in San Antonio area, we are 386. You still get discount 29 cents. Okay, San Antonio is 427. Let's go back to Dallas area. What is Dallas? Wow, 390. Look at you guys in Texas. You lucky 390. 390 is a good price for fuel. Let's see Oklahoma. 380. Wow, that's great. Let's go to California. Los Angeles, California. Let's see how California treating us, right? Okay. So here you go. Okay. Ooh, California. Six, really? Well, but in Los Angeles area is 482 with discount for one dollar. So if you do not have RTS, you're still paying 593. If you do have RTS fueling, you are getting dollar eleven discount. So you can average 482 for California, which is not bad at all. Okay, in the pants, of course, which you use in 615. Flyers 615. They don't give discounts. Okay, don't go to flyers. We're not paying 615 for the fuel. So that's what's going on. Let's see on our power debt. What are not our numbers, right? What are our numbers? Got it. Let's log in. Let's kick out one of my dispatchers. So we need to log in. Unfortunately, probably doesn't know that I am doing live. So let's see trend lines. 
trad lines right now. So we are finishing November at 238 for drive-in, 283 for flatbed, and 279 for reefers. So reefers have been steady in the last three months, but drive-in went down, same as a flatbed, right? So that's what's going on. And our fuel is average is still 514 for November. So hopefully our average for December is going to be different. So here is, let's stop sharing. Uh, let's remove. Uh, Ryan, so what is that? Um, uh, <laughs> thanks, Alex. I'm back in trucking as a long haul driver. My co-driver and good friends wants to buy his first truck and needs your mentorship. Well, make sure that he comes for the mentorship. Well, we have somebody uh, speaking in Russian, guys. I don't mind to speak in Russian or Ukrainian, but if you want to be a dispatcher, start learning communicated in English. I don't care if we all have accents. I don't care if sometimes it might not be grammarly good English, but please make sure. But, здравствуйте, Алекс, у вас классные видео, спасибо. Пожалуйста, на здоровье всем. Um, what else? Let's go back because it's a first time, a first time I am doing, I am doing the live on on the three platforms. So we are on Facebook now, we are on YouTube and TikTok. Okay. What's the only load board you use? Okay. Well, thank you. Wow. Look, see, look at this. I love people who understand what they want. They jump, they improve. Thank you so much, Samad. I appreciate that. So that means that he understands the importance of adopt, uh, being adoptive, right? So right there from Russian, he went to English and probably I bet Samad speaks at least four or five languages. So I, I appreciate that knowledge as well. Which load board do I use? I personally like to use that. I do also, I do also have truck stop because I teach classes. I also use every broker's load board, right? But again, I do prefer the pro, pro description for that. One more time. Remember that we have a special code. If you want to get the first month for free, you can go to our website, learndispatchtoday.com, right, guys? You remember where to find us, right? You remember where to find us. So everything is here. So if you're looking for the free uh, months, you can click here and get if you have MC. If you are independent dispatcher to get load board access you need to have corporation or any business structure already formed in usa you need to have the tax id they will do verification and they will still give you access but you cannot just do it via link you have to mention the code and you need to call them right um what else uh how uh, how to get rts fuel card please contact me again my phone number uh i mean again tiktokers you do not see my screens right i don't even know so oh uh, see it's for people on facebook on on uh tiktok they see everything i'm sure so tiktok is kind of for entertainment but i see that we have 1.3 likes so I know that TikTok is good to get the audience, but it's not really good for teaching. Do you teach on weekends? Well, yes, I do teach on weekends. All the classes on weekends only. And why, Vitaly? Because everybody who takes classes or they still have some other job or they are on the road. And for me, I don't just teach right i still run dispatch service my own company insurance real estate so unfortunately only weekend so i'm like that 24 7 machine right i'm always working actually i try to make monday my day off but it doesn't happen because monday is a very stressful day in trucking so i always have to oversee all my dispatchers 
what else guys any questions did you deal with some problem and you need to know how to deal with this you work hard alex oh thank you my ha highway cowboy on TikTok. well i know that you work hard as well how is florida treating you i hope no more one peak three drops right you listen to me I know you're a big boy. I love your live shows. Actually, I was uh, watching TikTok yesterday and you guys got live with a bunch of, bunch of drivers. And I believe that Letty, Letty, uh, Letty was running that show. And I can tell you this, my dear guys, big, big manly guys in those rigs. Well, we as a woman, well, we have the sassiness. We can run the shows, we can organize, and we are actually taking over from you. So empowering women in trucking. That's why next week, actually, if you guys watching me and you do want to reach out and be on the live show, we are going to have the live show about safety for women who are actually OTR drivers. So I would like to have women from different parts of USA if you do want to participate, please email me, text me, because we have so many issues. We have uh, unsafe conditions for women. We have situations when we really want to bring awareness to the public. So dear girls, if you're watching me and you would like to change awareness, and if you would like to change trucking for better, let's do it. And it's probably going to be not just one show. Okay. Um, who else do we have? Alex, you look beautiful. Okay. Um, let's not to go, let's not to go to the personal likeness, right? We are here to change trucking for better, but thanks for the compliment. Hello, how are you, Miss Smith? Uh what 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 can you say on the future of this industry? Well, I can tell you this industry is not going anywhere america is uh not able to survive without trucking the matter is that a lot of carriers are not going to be able to survive if the things are not going to change with the rates i mean diesel went down a little bit so it's going to help for a lot of you to kind of stay uh floating right so um trucking has a lots of innovations technology we have some regulations which we need to fight because it will be challenging to continue being safe on the road. That's why most of the organizations who are try to put people together, unite, uh, want to go against the speed limiters, AB5 rules. They want to review some regulation for hours of service. We definitely need parking we need parking uh everywhere each state we are lacking enough parking for semi trucks well industry is not going anywhere i do personally believe that improvements has to be done on all the levels transparency is a must between the brokers dispatchers owners of the trucking uh, trainings have to occur for the drivers on all the levels. We do need to improve, but millions, billions are made in trucking every year. Mega carriers are trying to cut that pie and get a bigger slice. So unfortunately, this is a battle which is not going anywhere, right? They try to get rid of... Uh, uh, they got they try to get rid uh, from the small carriers, so they want to shut out small carriers. And when we talk about small carriers, we're talking about one to five trucks, one to six trucks. But again, guys, uh, they trying and trying for years. That's why they lobbying all the regulations. I mean, all of this is connected. And you can be sitting here naive and thinking that FMCSA is trying the best what has to be done for the drivers, for their safety, for the public. Well, this is a joke, guys. If you do safety and compliance, if you really read into most of the regulations first, most of the regulations are done on not having enough data. 
Some of them are done because somebody is paying. And who is paying? Of course, the huge mega carriers are paying. Of course, huge shippers are paying because they want to control. Of course, we do have political games there. And it's been going on for years and years and years, right? And uh, you can sit and complain or you can get united and start changing trucking for better, right? And um, me personally, I don't care which uh, organization I have to belong to. And I am not going to pick and choose. I want to belong to all organizations which are actually trying to change trucking for better. I would like to empower women. I would like to empower uh, immigrants. I would like to empower anybody who is in trucking. I would like to make sure that uh, people understand that it's not that easy to be a truck driver. So we need to have extra services available for truck drivers on the road. We have lots and lots of mental issues with the people who are on the road. This is a stressful job. Also, we have every tense driver. This is a uh, prior military uh, personnel. So they already have the trauma. They already dealing with the stress. We have people who are losing their families because when markets goes down, when you away from the family, well, this puts a lot of stress on your kids, on your family. People go through divorces. People go through a lots and lots of personal drama. So we do need to bring awareness. We need to have support. Uh, other issues which we have in trucking, it's a health, um, health concerns for our drivers, right? Again, because... They do not have access to a healthy food on truck stops. They don't even have enough showers sometimes. So, well, then we have the problems. We have the uh, obesity. We have uh, heart attacks and everything else because, again, they are driving for 11 hours. So no exercise, no good food, uh, sleeping somewhere on a shoulder. So how can you sleep when you know that you are parked in the area where somebody can hit you, person cannot relax. So who is talking about this? How many YouTubers are talking about this? How many people are actually putting their minds together and see how it can be changed? And yes, it can be approved. But to get approved, we need a unity. We need uh, voices. And we don't really have to have just voices from truck drivers. So picture this. We have 3.5 a million drivers, right? And I do not count all the drivers on the box trucks, like uh, bus, bus CDLs and everything else. So this is just a number by the statistics of the labor just for the semi-trucks. So 3.5 drivers. So count their family in. So multiply that number at least by five, by 10, because if you have somebody who you love, your family member, aren't you worried about them being uh, sleeping somewhere on a shoulder? Aren't you worrying on them that they cannot get healthy food? Yes. So we do have a power. This is just a matter of the unity. Unity, not union. Unity. Putting all our powers together, all organizations together, and really start changing, talking for better. All of us. Doesn't matter where you at, right? So what else? Alex, you are so smart. Thank you. Um, well, you know what? Uh, I, I'm lucky that I have some education, but I can tell you the key of being smart, it's never stop learning. Guys, you can you have to be ignorant to think that you already know it all. Every day I learn something new, and you need to follow some steps, right? You need to make sure that you associate yourself with more successful people. You need to find 30 minutes a day to read a book or read or listen to podcasts, and especially even for drivers. I know you're driving, but nowadays we have so many podcasts. We have so many YouTube channels that you can learn something new. You can choose a different subject. It doesn't have to be talking. Because overall education has to go higher, right? So thank you for the compliment. But again, there is no ceiling for me. I really, I have so many things I need to catch up on different levels. And I'm very lucky to be able to associate with people who are way smarter than me, you know? And uh, I want to learn from them. 
I do invest in classes for myself. I go and I take trainings and I'm always looking to expand my knowledge. How to build relationship with the brokers and local companies. Again, are you a carrier or you a dispatcher? If you're a dispatcher, you have to make sure that your carrier goes and do this. How do you build the relationship? Guys, it's sales. Trucking, this is sales. Negotiating loads is sales. Going and find the dedicated runs for you as a trucker, it's also sales. Nowadays, uh, people do it over the phone, over email. You start writing those emails. Me personally, I still believe in personal connection. People need to make sure that they see you, they look at your eyes, they hear your mission, and that's what I believe. So me personal, every time if I need have something to be done, I want to meet with people. And nowadays, you don't have to physically go somewhere. We have Zoom meetings, right? We have all these softwares because I do believe when you represent you as a carrier, when you represent as a dispatch service, when you represent yourself even as instructor and they see real you, right? And they see they see your eyes. Oh, favorite TQL. What is a TQL going to sell to us? Dispatch. Hey, this is Justin with TQL. I'm just calling to ask about your drive day in Chicago. I'm going to keep that day available for today. Yes, it's available. What do you have, sir? So I got a 152 drop. It's picking up in Illinois today. Or I'm sorry, Chicago today. Mm -hmm. uh, as soon as possible. The product is ready right now. We're ready to get on your truck. That's going to uh, Tomo, Wisconsin tomorrow at 4 a.m. And then North Plate, Nebraska, Saturday at 9 a.m. Are those both Walmart? What's that? The receivers are Walmart? Uh, both, yeah, both Walmart. Wow, you are the first representative who is not hiding who the receivers are. Because TQL users say, we cannot tell you who receiver or who is a shipper. Oh, no. Okay. There's no reason for that. Uh, no, they're both going to be Walmart. They all gonna be Walmart. Well, first, if you have an experienced dispatcher, they already know by the cities that it's going to be Walmart. So yeah. we're picking up today. What is a commodity? Uh, commodity is gonna be a truckload of pork rinds. It's the pig skin chips. They're all gonna be bagged up and put in boxes, thrown on the pallets. Um, you're looking at about five thousand six hundred pounds or less on this one. Mm -hmm. um, roughly about 960 miles total loaded. Total loaded miles, 960. Okay. And how general TQL is today? Um, tell you what, you're probably never going to hear TQL as generous as they are today. I want this one out of my hands. You just tell me what you need to get it done, and I will make it happen for you. You're going to make it happen for me. So one more time, we're picking up today. It's ready, so... My truck can be there probably within an hour and a half. I mean, it's Chicago. Toma, Wisconsin, tomorrow what, 4 a.m.? Yes, ma'am. And, and then North Platte is going to be when? 9 a.m. on Saturday morning. 9 a.m. on Saturday morning. Well, North Platte is going to be dead on Saturday, right? You have any reloads in North Platte? Uh, not that I know of. As, as far as my account goes, I know that we don't have anything coming out of Nebraska. Okay, so we already have their nego negotiation point, right? It's going to be nothing there, so I will need to deadhead to probably at least Omaha area or whatever, or Kansas. Well, I can tell you this, for me to pick up and have two drops, being in the area on Saturday with no loads, well, I need to be at least at... 3,800. 38. Tell you what. I want to get you on this load. You want to get me on this uh, load? Yep. What is you your... Check, what, I'm pretty sure I can make 38 work. What is your extension? Uh, my extension is 54428. And your uh, name? If you can just literally hold for two seconds so I can confirm it. Okay, I can make 38 work for you. Okay, I can put you on hold. Well, and that's how it goes, right, guys? 
So we're talking about two drops. We can pick up today. We're going to be North Plate. Well, we're talking total 997. Well, at least 380 per mile, right? So that's how dispatchers work. So now what the second part you need to do, I do need to kick out my dispatcher out of this because I want to tell you the reality. Well, it is going to be truck on Saturday. So if I post my truck on Saturday in North Plate, North Plate, uh, Plate, Nebraska, right? So let's see. And here is the reality. It's no load. Wow. Let's increase this to 250 miles that had. 250 miles. So what's the closest load? As I said, we will need to go towards Nebraska opposite way, but we're not going to go there. Colorado, nothing in Iowa. So even if he's going to give me 3,800, which seems so cool, 380, right? It seems so good, 380 per mile, two drops. Oh my God. Will I take this load? No, because it's going to be no reload. So does it make sense? Dispatch. Well, um, unfortunately, I need five minutes because I do need to find any load. Can you check in TQL system if there's anything around and you can put up to 200 miles that head? Because I just checked, you know, while you were checking on the price. Yeah. It's it's nothing there. Can you check in uh, on the TQL load board if uh, you can help me out with reload? Because otherwise, I, I mean, I know you got me my price, but... Can you check? Can I put you in here, lock it down, um, and then I will go on the board and I'll No, check. honey, we're not in kinder yeah. we're not in kindergarten. That's not gonna happen. Can you check first? Yeah, yeah, I have no problem. Just give me one second and well, I got a team of eight people. I'll put them all on the board and I'll be like, Hey, find me something, okay? Okay, so do you wanna call me back in five minutes? Um, no, if you can just hold on for me, I'd love to keep you on the phone. Um, and I'll just look for something right now really quick, okay? Okay, look for something right now. I'll I'll put you on a brief hold uh, because I do have a phone call, but I'll be right back. All right. Yeah, no problem. So here you go. Did you see how smooth he was trying to do? Oh, you know what? Why don't I lock you down? And believe me, if I would have a driver who needs to go that area, right, or needs restart, 3,800, it's a pretty good load, right? You go for restart, you deliver Saturday, you restart done by Saturday night, you are early truck, I'll find you the load, you are deadheading and you keep going. It depends on your driver. So for some people, this load can work. But do I believe that TQL gonna find reload? But see how smooth he's like, oh, let's lock you down. You go load. And then, wow, eight people working in TQL looking for the load. It's nothing there on Saturday, right? So, well, that's how professional dispatchers work. But look at that. Can you get the 380 for 1,000 miles? Yes, you could. Two Walmarts. Well, still a good price for nowadays. And did they call me? So look at this. TQL sucks. We don't work with TQLs. Well, it depends how you negotiate. We do have a good brokers in uh, every area. But remember, also, the good professional dispatchers have to make sure that we have backhaul. So let's see. If we would take this, what is our closest option? Okay, Lincoln, Nebraska, Missouri, Colorado. Aurora, well, Mola Solutions, Creed, well, we're not that heading that much. We can go to Spokane. Actually, I can go and look at XPO on this load, the details, when it's picking up, because we are delivering early on Saturday. We can go deadhead. Spokane, Washington, what's going on in Washington and Oregon right now? Still going to be Christmas trees next week, probably the last few loads. Well, it can work, right? So... What are we going to tell TQL? Well, TQL, we're not going to take your load, right? Because we're going to do something better. He is nice guy. He is nice guy. But again, do I represent TQL? He's very nice guy for TQL. Hello? Hey, so I'm um, I wanted to 
went ahead and looked. It looks like I got a couple lows on here that are um, picking up on Monday um, out of that area. Um, wow, but we are delivering um, Saturday. Yeah, I mean, I, I looked for everything Saturday and Sunday, and the, the soonest I would have um, coming out would be Monday. And what is your name, hon? Uh, my name is Justin. Justin, um... Well, I will need to have five, ten more minutes. I want to call XPO and see if there are Aurora, Nebraska to Spokane, Washington still available. So unfortunately, I know you went and you got me the rate and you're a really nice kid for TQL. Um, I do need my job. I need to do my job correctly. So can you give me five minutes? I want to make those two phone calls to XPO and see if I can secure that load for Saturday. Right. What is your extension again? Five four four two eight. Two eight. Until what time can we pick up this? Uh, actually, tell you what, my partner just found something for Saturday as we're talking right now. Oh, he found something for Saturday. What did he find? Yep. Give me one second. Sending it over to me right now. Uh, so the closest one we have is picking up in Salinas, Kansas. Um, Saturday is first come first serve from noon to midnight, um, and it is going up to Garner, North Carolina, delivering on Monday, first come first serve, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Okay, what is the commodity? Uh, commodity is going to be a truckload of batteries and cells and accessories. A driver has to be tanker indoors. I think, I mean, just the regular 53 okay. drive van should be fine for this one. And how much are you paying? Um, give me one thing to check because it's for another broker. Okay. It's looking like 22 to 23 on this one is what he has it in for. Well, if that's going to be 2300, we're going to have total 6100 for the whole for our two loads divide by our total miles 2544. I'm going to be at 239. Unfortunately, it's lower than I need to be, so we need to catch up another 30 cents. So, we need to get we need to get a little bit more. So zero three multiply by twenty five forty four. Well, I need another seven hundred sixty dollars. I don't know which load do you want to push. Do you want to push the load with two drops, or do you want to push the load which goes to North Carolina? So why don't you call there? Oh yeah, why don't you call representative? See if he can uh, get to. 3,000 on North Carolina and 38 on this, or we can go 42, whatever. I don't care how you're going to get it. As long as I can get to my 265 for all miles, I would be okay. I do need okay. to, I do need to answer a few phone calls. So just call me back, please. Just take your five minutes and I'm going to call the XPO as well. Right. Okay. Good. Thank you. So guys, that's how you work as a dispatcher. While well, the first load is great, he even found something. We need to make sure that we can pick up. And if we are delivering early, we have some deadhead, right? We have actually 297 miles deadhead, which is actually common for uh, states, which I call uh, in the middle of nowhere. And guys, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings if you live in the states, but I call them because it's really no freight there. So which states are those? This is Nebraska, South uh, South Dakota, North Dakota, Montana, Wyoming, a lot of times New Mexico. So those states, you have to be really careful, right? You need to make sure that you understand what is your load going to be. So if he can get me that money, well, we can think about it, right? Um and, I mean, he's a nice kid, and he needs to understand that this is possible. So there you go, TQL for you. Okay. 
had a great time learning this past class. You have a plenty of content to keep learning. I cannot wait to be able to do safety and compliance, of course, because safety and compliance, it is something you guys need to do. Sorry that you see guys me moving because I have like my phone in front of us at TikTok. I, I tried to read the TikTok. I just learned something new with TQL. Yes, backhaul. So what did we all learn? Well, uh, if you can get me back home and if I put two loads together and this is possible, then yeah, I can do it. Still have to be careful, guys. It's Saturday. Before you go pick up that load, you need to receive boss rate confirmations. You do need to call that pickup on Saturday. Make sure it does exist, right? It has to exist, okay? Uh, what else? Um, uh, what else? What can you tell about Uzbek Cares running illegal business, fake and ELD, double brokering, and ETC? Oh, I can tell a lot about Uzbek, Tajikistan, Russian, Ukraine, Polish, Moldovan, Romanian, Bulgarian, Serbian, <laughs> Bos Bosnian. Come on, we have a lot of scammers. We have scammers on uh, doesn't matter which nationalities we are talking about, right? So uh going in tql got into tanker market their rates are horrible yeah they are trying to make their profits i used to i used to work for work one of the companies that work against the trucking regulations but after watching your videos to be honest i got lots and lots info and got why doing this business legally is better well first if you're gonna start doing this big as a uh, business legally you are not going to be worried about liability first you're going to start sleeping at night secondary you are going to start sleeping better at night because you know that nobody's going to get killed on the road because you're pushing your drivers right because you are not paying your drivers money back because you just you just you know good when you do something good that universe always brings you good but in trucking we have a lot of liability so do you want your driver to lose his life? Do you want anybody else on the road? To lose? Do you want to go personally to jail if you are the owner of the company? Well, it's lots and lots of liability in trucking. Yes, boss Alex. Yes, Mrs. Smith. You are the boss too. Proud of my girls. Girls, I want you back on the show. Can you become a freight broker and dispatch yourself or your driver? Again, going to brokerage, yes. You can do anything you want. You want to become a broker? Go apply for MC. Make sure that you open company. Get a surety bond. Make sure you file BOC3. Have some knowledge and go ahead. Anything in life is possible, right? You can be dispatcher. You can be a broker. You can be a owner of the trucking company. You can be insurance agent. You can be agent for all the factorings. You can be instructor if you have enough knowledge. In life, if you do have a goal, you can be anything. It's just all up to you. The steps which has to be done, consistency, right? Not intensity. Look at Alex. I am so intense now, right? But I am also consistent, right? I run my YouTube channel. I still do the classes. I could have just went and said, well, I'm going to do classes back to back. And actually, we did have a lot of classes this year. So Alex wants to slow down a little bit. Uh, but consistency is important. So same in trucking, consistency building up your uh, company if you are dispatch service with improving consistency is taking over intensity right and sometimes you need to organize your workflow right just sitting and looking at that load board while well, you need to have plan a b c and d and start putting your responsibility on somebody else's shoulders. You need to learn how to navigate. You need to know how to solve the problems. You are the one who makes decisions, and especially dispatchers. I am repeating this over and over and over. We are not secretaries. We are professional dispatchers. And professional dispatchers, they deal with finding the loads, monitoring the transit, building their relationships between brokers, between even uh, uh, dealerships, between shippers, receivers. We are people who actually 
running trucking. And I understand the drivers are the one who do the hard part of this. But without good dispatchers, the driver is not going to make as much profit. Here's a question. Some drivers say, do I need a dispatcher? They just the suckers. They just take money. Well, again, if you person who can multitask and you drive in and you can still put in a load and put other in a danger, well, go ahead and do it. If you drive in and your girlfriend sitting next to you, dispatching you, that's a different thing. But nowadays with this market and actually with the safety, no, you cannot be driving and trying to dispatch and sign rate confirmation. No, you're not. And believe it or not, uh, as a driver on the road, you don't even see what's going on, right? So you jump for that 3,800 and you did not even check other any loads because you're driving, you are busy. So believe it or not, in the end of the month, your profits are going to be less. But again, your dispatcher has to know what they're doing, pre-booking, negotiating, putting one and two together, right? Okay. Um, I am thinking about... Your dispatch course, and then wonder after completing courses if I can work in your dispatch service. Well, we see it's always a possibility. In the pants, in the pants on your desires. We are adding more care, so we are looking for different, different, um, different options. Okay, I am an independent owner operator, and I have been talking for twenty two and a half. I love listening to you. Well, Larry Allison, thank you for listening to me. And I would love you to come up and tell us about trucking for 22 and a half years. So make sure you reach out to me. Guys who've been on the road for a long time, if you can share and you can give tips and you can help some newbies, well, that's what we do, right? As a driver, what a good company you recommend. Well, I am not advertising any company. Uh, we have some people who looking looking for good drivers. If you are a company driver, if you are owner operator, it's we also have a good companies who we. But I'm not gonna go choose and pick because I don't want to like oh this company probably paid her for ad advertisement. Well, first nobody pays me for advertising their company. I want to make sure that you also gonna be making money, and I want to make sure that company. That's what they promise. Because a lot of times people ask me, Alex, can you refer me a good driver? And I do. And then the company first, their safety is not good. They are not treating the driver well. So I I uh, kind of start hating being in the middle. So if something I can deliver personally, my team or people who are around me, uh, if they can do a good job, then I do referrals. I've been out here for 36 years, legally driving most of my time around trucks. I've seen a lot. Well, Timothy, well, reach out. We want to see the new generation. We want to see the generation which have been on the road for 36 years because it's probably, probably very different nowadays, right? I would tell someone new to look for a smaller care to work for. Yeah, smaller carriers is easier just because uh, the dispatchers don't have that many trucks. The smaller carriers, they still kind of trying to be honest, right? Because they are starting the business. So um, I like carriers up to 10 trucks. I mean, when you go over 10 trucks now, it's getting, you know, uh, if they don't have a good team, it's hard to manage. So that's what it is. Uh, you do not have your broker license. Do you prefer dispatching? Uh, no, I don't have a broker uh, authority. This is not a license. This is authority yet. But you know what? Actually, looking at all this nonsense with brokers taking advantage of the cares, I actually put it on my list for 2023. I really do think, and guys, I do love to sell. I love to connect to people. I love to make sure that carriers have a job and they do a good job. I actually honestly thinking on getting into brokerage myself. So probably I will um, apply for my MC in January. I don't want to do anything in December. I don't want to have another company registering right now. So yes, this is on my 2023 goals. So hopefully guys, then... We not gonna only have dispatch in safety and compliance, but we also gonna have brokerage starting from the beginning, right? And uh, hopefully one day 
one day, uh, you know, some of you are going to be calling me and say, well, oh, I'm calling you Alex and I am watching you on YouTube and TikTok. Please, please, can you give me extra $50? So if you're going to beg me, no, I'm not going to do give you $50. I am going to make sure that I make money. But if you're going to validate to me, well, Alex, my truck is 15 miles away. We are set up with you or maybe we are not. We do have a good equipment. We are good care. Well, I'll give you extra $200 because I do believe in building relationships, right? So that's something which is on my plan. But thanks for asking. How do you get direct shippers? Again, you probably join us later. As a dispatcher, you're not going to be able to get direct shippers. You have to do it on behalf of the carrier. So bigger carriers, they have a sales team. They go get direct lines, direct shipment. As a dispatcher, you cannot do that. Um, do you work with CDL Hotshots and under TK? I would love to work with you. Unfortunately, not. Unfortunately, not. Maybe I should start looking into this and build the team for the Hotshots and um, straight box. Everything is possible. Everything is possible. Well, guys, I thought it's going to be only 30 minutes. We already have been talking one hour, 25 minutes. So here you go. Do you want to be a dispatcher? What the first things you need to like to do? Well, blah, blah, blah. You have to be able to communicate, right? So here you go. Start practicing. Start posting. Start posting those TikToks and YouTube channels. And remember, uh, I already packed my trucks. What are we doing today, tomorrow, for four days in a row? We're sending those trucks to DCs, right? And some people to DC. And some people making fun of it. But guys, this is a good, good positive influence. And it's going to go to Toys and Tots. And actually, it shows us, can you guys get united? If you cannot get united over the toy truck, well, let me be honest. You're never going to get united, right? Well, it was a pleasure talking to you guys, as always. And I really think that I'm going to start doing this more often. I'm not going to be preparing with the topics because in dispatch, in trucking, things come up all the time, new trucks. But I really want to bring out the next week, we will have the girls who are in trucking on the road. We're going to talk about their safety. We also partner out with financing companies. So if you will, guys, need equipment, if you're looking for equipment, what this group does, they reach out to me. I looked into this and I do like the idea. So we're going to partner up if you need help with the financing because sometimes it's hard. If you're a brand new company or if your credit is not as great to get financing but also find equipment. So we're going to meet with Derek. He's a... He's the uh, owner of that finance company from Kansas. So we're going to bring that to you guys. We also going to be meeting with another group, which is, uh, I believe, lunch today. So we're going to make sure that we, um, we give the option. I decided that we're going to work on the app for Dispatch Training Center. And we are starting with our mentoring memberships and extra stuff from the student, ongoing support. Everything is going to be done by the next uh, Friday. So I still do believe that ongoing support is important. It's going to be different tiers for different people. VIP mentoring, of course, one-on-one. -on -one. We're going to have a bigger groups, which is going to be cheaper. We're going to have just the free stuff. So it doesn't matter. You can just download our app and hopefully we will be launching it by the end of the next week. What else new? Well, our uh, classes are... Uh, open for January, right? We have January dispatch class. We have safety class. We have IFTA class. Guys, don't forget to continue your UCRs, right? Uh, unified care. Make sure you renew your IFTA licenses. Make sure that you order your decals, right? Because it's already December 1st. Oh my God, December 1st. This year went so fast. 
What else? Uh, make sure that you helping your drivers to prepare for the tax year, right? Right nowadays, it's a lot of templates. Make sure that they start putting together all their expenses, all their food expenses, fuel, repairs, gears, and everything else, because um, taxes are kind of touchy subject in trucking, and a lot of people ride off too many things guys you don't want irs knocking on your door two three years later right well just 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 use logic right use a good accountant please don't do your taxes on the turbo tax believe me in trucking this is not this is not an option you want to use and we're gonna how to join your membership on YouTube? Well, membership on YouTube right there. You can click join and it's $3.99 and you have a chance to win a free class in uh, on Christmas again. And plus, uh, you will be added to our list of members on uh, our regular app. Uh, Unity. Okay, Unity is a must. So let's finish on this. Let's change trucking for better together, right? And we can do it only by what? By liking, by commenting, by asking questions. Uh, what else? Two more questions from TikTok. And I really want to have your opinion, TikTokers who are watching right now. Was it beneficial for me also have the TikTok while the YouTube going on? Is that easier for you guys to watch it on TikTok? So if you can put some, if you can put some likes. If you can put some likes uh, to to tell me, I mean, is that something you would like to have it more regularly? Maybe we can set up like uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and we would do the same time so everybody knows that we go at the same time. So make sure, yeah, put some likes so at least I know, right? Okay. And the last question, what is the best? Oh, hold on. Where did it go? What is the best advice to find cares as an independent dispatcher? Well, you need to start seeing who is opening companies. Talk, talk to your friends, talk to talk to friends of friends. Make sure that they know that you're starting dispatch. Well, you have to be present on the social media. You have to be on TikTok. You have to be on Instagram. You have to be on Facebook. You have to belong to a lot of groups. Start talking, start commenting. Just make sure you have a knowledge. Make sure you have a knowledge and knowledge has to go back not how to dispatch, not how to pause the truck, but also safety and compliance. You need to make sure that your carriers understand that you're not out there just to make your percentage. And let's be realistic, guys, right? Let's be realistic about the rates right now. If you're a brand new dispatcher, well, I don't know. If you're starting from 10, 12% for dispatch, well, you have to be lucky if people are willing to pay you that. I do, I do, I do believe uh, six, six to eight percent is more than fair in this market to pay for dispatch. Of course, if your dispatch service also doing your safety compliance, that percentage can go higher. If you have somebody like me who is also building your company from ground, while well, this is a totally different pricing, right? Knowledge is a key, but again, this is all about sales. If you find the carriers who are willing to pay you from zero knowledge, 10, 12%, well, I guess you're a good salesperson, right? Yes, more TikTok, more Alex, please. Thank you. I have been booking my freight for years, but if I was to use this page, you would be my person. Okay, Larry, maybe we should do an experiment, right? I'll do it for free for two, three days and see, can we get you better numbers, right? Well, we can do that. We can do experiments. Well, maybe that's what we should do. I would dispatch for three days for free just to have a fun and see uh, and see how it goes. But it has to go live. It has to be displayed because this is a reality. We do not pretend. We actually show the reality of trucking. Look at this. We have a new member. Wow. Somebody, Joshua Rivera, just become a member i guess why because he wants to support the mission for four dollars a month he wants to support the mission plus he has a chance every time we have holidays right he has a chance to win a free class and he can take all of them or he can give to somebody else we appreciate you we appreciate our members and just for the information in the past year we did award uh 
free classes uh, combining all together with from dispatch and other people sponsoring around forty two thousand dollars of free classes so not to throw the numbers around but this is a big impact and usually we award the classes for our members our previous students but mostly for people in need so if you're watching us and you really have the story and you're really serious about trucking not just to make up story please uh, send your award letter. You do have to be active on our three platforms. Don't just send me, oh, I saw you one live. You were giving free classes. I want a free class. If I never see you watching my lives, if I never see you commenting, if I never see you sharing, well, you're not serious. I'm sorry, but I really want to help people who want to succeed. And we helped lots and lots of people already. Uh, I was wondering where are these questions are coming from that you are reading. Oh, okay, because I have the phone in front of me, see, right here. So I have the phone in front of me, so I have that TikTok going on there. So that's where the question is going from, because today is the first time when I am streaming live on TikTok and YouTube, because a lot of people don't want to go to YouTube or Facebook. So that's why. So, Miss uh, Smith, are you following me on TikTok? Well, if you do, then you have me on all three devices, right? So people who are following me everywhere, their head is already spinning. Oh, my God, she's on Facebook, she's on YouTube, she's on Instagram, and she's on TikTok. Guys, don't get tired of my voice. You're going to get used to it. You're going to become to love my accent and my directness, right? And if you do not, well, find a different people to watch, right? Well, we are here about positivity. We are here about learning and we are here about empowering. Well, whew, hour 36 minutes. <clears throat> yeah, sometimes you do need that glass of water. Well, you want to succeed? Which steps are you doing for succeeding? Well, you still in Ukraine? Well, first, we do give discounts to everybody in Ukraine. So you receive $250 off. But I know that everybody's struggling. So maybe you should write that award. Maybe you should tell me because you've been following me. And we'll see. What are you looking for? What are your dreams? What are your goals, right? And we always can support. Uh, start, start a broker business with me. Love you. Well, if I'm going to start brokering business, uh, here's the news, guys. Um, being in America for 23 years, I had business partners. I had businesses with other people. And unfortunately, I learned it the hard way. Any business that I will ever start or I will ever put 100%, it's going to be only me as the owner of the business. I can be associated. I can be... Uh, taking projects on the side, but um, do not believe in partnerships anymore. Uh, I love her. I love you guys back, but let's go back. I mean, um, here's a funny part. You know what? And I had a permission to use this and I am going to read it to you. Hold on. Uh, let me find this email. Let me find this email. Uh, it came from. It came right here. Okay. Mm -hmm. It came from um, uh, Jim. And they are actually, I can tell you this. They are uh, co-founders of CDL uh, Drivers Unlimited. So cdldriversunlimited.com, and I had a meeting, and I love those guys. They are very smart, very educated, very successful. They they run uh, 500 fortune companies. I mean, I had a blast. You know, the meeting, which was supposed to be half hour, it became to be two hours, but we were talking, and he is also educator, and he told me, and I want to use it because he did give me permission. So, um that four letter words that you should use regularly right and the first is come with love you know what let me switch it right here so my eyes don't go 
I do need to go and order uh, order the glasses. So first word is love. So we're talking about four letter words that you should use regularly. Well, love is first of them. Love is a word that can only be used positively. It's positivity, right? And you need to exercise that. So start by saying, well, I love my job. Do you really love your job? You cannot like your job. You have to love your job. And if you don't love your job, then unfortunately you have to start looking for a new uh, career or job. You have to love. So everything in life starts with love. Do you love your partner? Do you love your partner? Well, if that is not there, maybe it's time to go on your own, right? Well, you have to love your kids. You have to love nature. You have to love. Love is the beginning of positivity. Well, the second word which he gave is help. Help. So, and here's the thing, which I never thought. Maybe because I am born in Ukraine, raised in Ukraine, and we think it differently. Help. In America, people will stand around and watch you struggle. Ask for help, and almost everyone will try to help. So do not put yourself in the position of being asked this question. Why didn't you ask for help? Well, first, you need to always ask, how can I help you? So how can I help you to be a better dispatcher? And when you're looking for something, ask for help. Believe it or not, successful people, people just on the street, people just in the store, if you ask that I need help, from 10 people, 8 people are going to offer you help. So help is a second powerful word. Then he said it's a fear. And fear is an acumen for false education appearing rare. Listen to this one more time. Fear. This is an acumen for false education appearing rare. And that's what we have in talking. So that's why we have fear, because we only fear what we do not understand. So if you're going to go learn safety and compliance, if you're going to learn the basics of dispatch, if you're going to learn how to be a better driver, do you going to still have a fear? No. Now you have the knowledge. So that fear disappeared. So please make sure that that fear is gone with proper education, right? So one more time, remember that fear stands for false education appearing rear. You can pretend that you know it all. First, for me personally, that would be ignorance because nobody knows it all. You can always, always improve. So that was the last one. And I love, I mean, the third one, and I, lost the, I love the last one, luck. People say, oh, she's just lucky. He's just lucky. That guy is lucky. So luck stands also, it's another argument for laboring under correct knowledge. Listen to this one more time. Laboring under correct knowledge. People will tell you how lucky you are. And some will be jealous of you. Because they're not going to be understanding how many years you told to get lucky. And again, luck, this is a laboring under correct knowledge. So here you go, guys. Those four words, love, help, fear, and luck. That's something new you learned today. Which one are you going to start working on? Well, we all can start with simply love. So here you go. Show me some love, right? Put that like, put that share. This is love because I gave you my love. I share my time with you. Look at this. I took almost two hours of my day to share information with you, to improve, to maybe motivate you, right? So show me love back, right? Simple like, simple comment. And it has to be positive because love can be expressed only in positive way. Second, ask for help. If you need help, ask for help today. If you're struggling with somebody, don't be proud. Don't be self-centered. Ask for help. Fear should disappear 
if you're going to start reading every day for half hour, if you're going to invest in, in your knowledge, if you're going to be improving, the fear is going to be gone and the luck is going to come by itself because you're going to start laboring under correct knowledge. And when you do something with the knowledge that brings you success, success brings you money. Money brings you wealth. But in the end of the day, remember, money cannot buy happiness. So you go back to love. Love what you do, love what you share, and it starts all over. I'm going to be done today because I still have to mail those trucks, right, to Washington, D.C. I love you guys. <laughs> I want to take you to dinner. Wow, let's go to dinner. So I want to succeed. Love. Thank you, Doreen. See, sending love. So starting, starting the little appreciation to each other is going to change trucking for better. Oh, what is this? No fear and a large amount of luck and money and happiness and a lot of love. Thank you, guys. Thanks for staying positive. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for following. Thank you for bringing joy in my life because I love teaching. I love when I hear the stories. And just remember that success comes from lots and lots of mistakes. Nobody built the company or got somewhere high if they did not make mistakes, right? So mistakes uh, have to be taken as experience. Experience going to give you extra knowledge. So don't be afraid of uh, failing. Just get up, do better, learn, and start all over. Okay? Love you guys. And see you soon. You lost the QL load. You know what? He he called me. He called me and I put him on hold. So I have to go. I still have to call the XPO first. So uh, we're going to call back and his extension 141428. So we're going to do that. Well, thank you guys. I need to finish first the TikTok. Okay. And now, thank you guys. And I'm going to say goodbye to people on Facebook and on YouTube. And this is kind of a long life. Maybe we're not going to do it that often. <laughs> right, guys? <laughs> because you're going to get tired of me. Again, see you soon. Bye.